look, I'll admit, for a second, Donald Trump and the Republican Party, they were doing a mildly good job. They were doing an adequate job at convincing people that maybe they cared a little bit about working Americans. Now, of course, this was nothing more than a ruse because it's not the Americans who they care about. What I said uh, was that, you know, capitalists, they acknowledge that we can't buy their goods and services if we have no money. So if we're going to be looking at another economic recession, possibly a Great Depression scenario, you have to take care of workers. Otherwise, the entire system itself can't survive. Capitalism implodes, right? But the problem here is that if we really want to take drastic action, flatten the curve, so to speak, we have to make sure that we are practicing social distancing, people are staying home, but the problem is this will lead to industries failing. The casino industry is asking for a bailout. The airline industry is asking for a bailout because people aren't traveling unless it's essential. So now what Republicans are doing is they're just taking the mask off. With Donald Trump, as of late, he's gone full mask off. He's revealing that when push comes to shove, he doesn't give a damn about the American people. He cares about the profits of large multinational corporations. Because look at what he tweeted out. In all caps, he says, we cannot let the cure be worse than the problem itself. At the end of the 15 day period, we will make a decision as to which way we want to go. No, I mean, I don't think that during a global pandemic, these types of cryptic tweets are very helpful because you can't really tell what he means by this. So all we can do is speculate. But if he really means what we all think it means, this is horrific. Like, the implications of this are absolutely horrifying. Because what he chooses to do doesn't just impact America. It impacts the rest of the world. So if he says, you know what? I hear you about flattening the curb and, you know, all of this uh, social distancing. But we're going to send everyone back to work. We're going to make sure that the economy doesn't suffer and it's business as usual, if he does this, people are going to die. A lot of people are going to die. Now, it's already the case that COVID-19 is going to kill thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially, of human beings. It's just a matter of what are we going to do to limit the death toll? That's really what we're faced with now. And part of limiting the death toll, flattening the curve, means... We have to take extreme measures. Will the economy and certain industries suffer? Yes, but that's something that we have to do if we truly care about human lives. But Trump is revealing here, actually, the economy is more important to me. Why? Because if the economy tanks, what's going to happen? Well, if you are an incumbent president and you're in an election year and the economy suffers, you usually lose. That's what history indicates anyways. So basically, if the economy suffers, then he may suffer. So this is about self-interest. That's if he truly is going to do this. Now, he gave us an indication that, uh, yeah, I care more about the economy than saving human lives. Because as Axios reports, Trump says coronavirus restrictions will be lifted soon, dismissing health experts. And he hinted at this during his latest press conference, and this is just, this is insane. And I will say we're going to be watching our senior citizens very closely. We're going to be watching uh, certain hotspots like New York, and within New York you have areas which are troubling, and we'll be working with the governor and the mayor and everybody else on those spots. Uh, but at the same time, at a certain point, we have to get open and we have to be uh, we have to get moving. We don't want to lose these companies. We don't want to lose these workers. We want to take care of our workers. So we'll be doing something, uh, I think, relatively quickly. But we've learned a lot during this period. This was a very necessary period. Uh, tremendous information was gained. But we can do two things at one time. You know, and again, I say we have uh, a very active flu season, more active than most. It's looking like it's heading to 50,000 or more deaths, deaths, not cases, 50,000 deaths, uh, which is, uh, that's a lot. And uh, you look at uh, automobile accidents, which are far greater than any numbers we're talking about. That doesn't mean we're going to tell everybody no more driving of cars. So we, we have to do things uh, 
to get our country open. But this has been an incredible period of learning, and we'll have announcements over the next uh, fairly short period as to the timing. In other words, yeah, I get that social distancing is absolutely necessary if we want to flatten the curve. I hear you. But this is hurting the economy. Social distancing is hurting the economy. And if the economy suffers, that's going to hurt my re-election chances. So I hear what the CDC says. I hear what the World Health Organization says. I hear you. But I just don't care. Now, there are some estimates that say this could last until spring of 2021. And Donald Trump said at this press conference, quote, I'm not looking at months. I can tell you that right now. So let's say that we need social distancing for three months. He's telling you flat out, not going to happen. Not going to happen because profits, the economy, that matters more than the lives of human beings. And like this is, you would think it goes against his own self-interest because the people who are disproportionately impacted are elderly voters who by and large are propping up the Republican Party. So if you kill off your base, that's going to hurt you. But I mean, he's not thinking logically. He's just panicking and he's not a leader. He, you know, he's in over his head. He doesn't know what to do. He's not cut out for this. And it's to a point now where I think the CNN headline that uh, Ken Klippenstein shared is terrifyingly accurate. It describes the situation too well. Dollars versus deaths. How many lives is the world economy worth? That's what President Trump faces as coronavirus creates a self-inflicted economic shutdown. Just the mere fact that we have to have this debate and question whether or not our government values the economy over human lives and certain industries over human lives shows you how much of a failure capitalism is. It's already killing the planet itself. Like, Earth is becoming uninhabitable because we value the profits of private companies over the habitability of our planet. And you're seeing firsthand how um, they don't even care if it kills people. If it kills off a large portion of the American population and the world population, meh. I'd rather just make sure that it's business as usual because I don't want the economy to suffer. Now, you have to, like, if you are a world leader from a different country, you have to be furious right now. Because if Donald Trump says, hey, everyone, it's business as usual, that's going to have implications for the world because the virus will spread here in the United States. And in turn it will proliferate throughout the world. So, I mean, the fact that this is even something that we're considering, the fact that it's masked off and they're just saying the quiet part out loud now is absolutely insane. I mean, the lieutenant governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, admitted that he would rather risk his own survival to make sure that the economy continues on the current trajectory. Well, even if it's the case that he does send everyone back to work, it's business as usual, right? Not every single country will do that. There are still going to be economic ramifications that will negatively impact us if other countries follow precautions. So this is unnecessary. If he chooses unilaterally to, you know, discourage social distancing, people may die for nothing and we still may have a global recession. But again, he's desperate. He's not thinking rationally. He's not a very logical person. He's an emotional person. Hence why we see so many all caps tweets from him. Now, to be fair, it's not just Donald Trump because Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York, one of the states that has been hit the hardest, if not the hardest, kind of hinted at the same thing. Because as Anthony Pascal of New York one tweeted, breaking Governor Cuomo, quote, we have to plan the pivot back to economic functionality, says we may not have to isolate everyone could allow the healthy, less vulnerable to work. COVID-19 survival rate is 98%. New York forward plan to look into restarting economic engine. Cuomo, at some point you have to open the valve because this is not sustainable. Says he has no second thoughts about keeping all non-essential workers home despite damage to the economy. Says there will be political consequences, but claims he doesn't care. Cuomo, the first order of business is to deal with this health crisis. We are still in the relative calm before the storm. Once we get through a health crisis, we will plan for economy. So it's subtle, but what he's hinting at here is, look, 
I get the necessity of social distancing, and yes, you know, we're on lockdown, but what if we just let maybe some young people return to work who are healthy? I mean, this should tell you everything that you need to know about our economic system, capitalism, and what it has done to our leaders. They literally care more about the economy than your life. That should tell you something. That should make you irate. You're paying taxes into a system that doesn't value you. It values our economic system and big business more than you. That should make you feel completely uneasy with the capitalist status quo. It should make everyone an anti-capitalist. And I don't care what you are, democratic socialist, anarcho-syndicalist, an anarchist, so long as you're not a capitalist, then I think that that's logical. But if you're still a capitalist when this system is going full mask off and we can see it, I mean, it's already gone mask off, right? It's already done enough to reveal itself. But if you're still proudly capitalist, I don't know what to tell you. It, there's a reason why younger people disproportionately are more in favor of socialism than capitalism. Because look at what the system is doing. It values the economy and the profits of big business more than our lives. And that should make everyone incredibly angry. So um, I don't really know what else to say. All that I will tell you is disregard what the government says if they're telling you to put your life at risk for the economy. If you work for a large multinational corporation like GameStop, they close now, but and they're telling you that you should risk your life just to make them profits, disregard what they say. The, like, at the end of the day, you have to acknowledge that your life is more important, and capitalism has basically made people buy into this notion that their lives don't really matter. They're, you know, just a cog in the machine and making sure that customers get video games or fucking, I don't know, something that doesn't really matter is more important than your own life. But that's not true. The economy can't survive without human beings. And because of that, we should be valuing human lives over everything else. But I mean, Donald Trump... He just, he genuinely doesn't care. He's rich. He's going to be okay. He's older, but he has money. So he will receive the best health care. He's being constantly tested for COVID-19. He's going to be okay at the end of the day. But the individuals who will suffer the most are the people who are vulnerable, who are at the bottom of our economic totem pole. And that should absolutely enrage everyone. But the fact that people are still complicit and have bought into this disgusting cult of an economic system, it tells you how effective it is and how much more vocal we're going to have to be in defeating it. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.